Hello everyone and welcome. We are in Sirencester and we've been joined by Michael of Fusso, or rather of Soft99 Europe. Yes. And uh, we were invited a couple of months ago now to Berlin, somewhere called the Classic Remise, which is a essentially um, <laughs> a wet dream for any car enthusiast. It is full of some most amazing cars um, kind of in storage and being worked on. But we weren't there to gawp at them, even though we, we did do a lot of that. Yeah. Um, we were there because Soft99 have launched a new Fusso. Um, so Fusso fans, we have here, this is in the old case but with a new sticker. Um, so the final version will look a bit different I think from that. Yes, a little bit different. And we had, uh, well, kindly Michael sent over a pre-release version to us. Uh, in fact, that very bottle I think. Um, and uh, for us to have a test with and to write about in the magazine. That's right. So far, so normal. This is, this is quite a regular occurrence, you know, we get stuff um, sometimes under NDA to test um, uh, with a view to putting it in the magazine. However, we tested it on my shagged out old Audi, um, in fact just before it was due to go and do a wedding duty, and uh, unfortunately we had all these deep shadows and splodges and problems to the point where we actually had to machine it off. So we got in touch and said, look, guys, um, we found a bit of an issue. Now, normally a product manufacturer at this point would probably say, nah, you're just putting it on wrong, go away, um, and stuff like that. But, but Michael's a bit different. He said, right, I need to, either you can come to Poland or we'll come to you, but either way, we need to get this fixed, um, which was brilliant, actually. Um, it's very similar to PowerMax, how when we had the, the uh, what's it called, tsunami wax in the mega test. And we said, look, really good wax, but uh, ease of use isn't perfect. And they actually reformulated it for the next part of the test, which was really, really good. Anyway, we've been today in Sirencester putting this through its paces. Initially, uh, we did some more testing on these panels. You might recognize these. These are what we've been using for the mega test. So at vast expense, we got these custom painted uh, panels, which are done in OEM standard paint. We have eight that are done OEM Japanese style and eight OEM European style, uh, which is part of the mega test we're doing, as you know, on dealership applied new car protections. So we thought we'd steal some of these, uh, obviously virgins, and um, put some foot on and we found that when it was applied by your detailer and it was done very thinly mm -hmm. the shadowing blotchy effects that we were getting were reduced and it was I don't know you how would you describe the finish you're saying it's kind of a, an attribute of the panel uh, it's really hard to say uh, because uh, there are many different uh, factors that can uh, change the mm -hmm. effect uh, which appears on the panel, yeah? It's kind of humidity, kind of a panel, kind of uh, uh, paint, uh, many different factors. Absolutely, so it's, it's environmental stuff. Yeah. Um, and we had air conditioning running in here, it's about 22 degrees, I would suggest. Um, and uh, when we applied it originally to the Audi a couple of months back, uh, it was probably, it was quite warm, it was about 22, 24 degrees, and it was quite nice and sunny, so not too mm -hmm. humid. Yeah. Um, and we were still getting those issues, but as I say, the big issue is applying these, and we'll go through this because I think there's a really important thing for both current Fusso fans and fans, or soon to be fans of the new Fusso. Um, anyway, uh, upshot is we then went downstairs and machined back the body of the Audi again and uh, reapplied it. And this time we did a 50 50 with it applied too thickly and a 50 50 with it applied next to the aforementioned tsunami wax um, to see what the differences were visually. And on the thickly applied product, we again saw the, the shadowing and the saturation and the, and the strange marks. And on the thinner one, um, unlike these panels where there was a sort of lack of clarity on the actual car, it looked really, really good really good and we're sat there feeling frankly like idiots because here we are with a machine bonnet it's looking really good under lights we did proper detailing lights and everything like that and we thought oh you've come a long way for no reason <laughs> <laughs> but then um, we wheeled it out into the sunshine and as you'll see from the cutscenes there is actually a bit of a difference uh, and there are these sort of darker marks that we're talking about and again what's really nice is that these guys are going to go back to uh, well you're based in Poland aren't you yes in Poland exactly and you'll communicate with the factory in Japan yes. and the scientists. And in fact, we interviewed uh, your one of your scientists in mm. Germany. I can't remember his name right now. He was an Englishman who lived in uh, Japan. Yeah. You mean Paul Shadow? That's the man. Yeah. Um, a very knowledgeable chap. And as I say, we'll put interviews up in, in due course with him. And um, there will be some further testing. And what's interesting is how much of this is just down to it being 
the UK. If you look at other manufacturers, for example, CarPro, they do C, uh, Car, CarPro C Quartz UK specifically for the UK environment. Uh, and I know of a couple other manufacturers off the record who have also had issues with the UK environment and as a result have reformulated as a consequence. So what I wanted to do here, and as you'll notice as ever, I've done all the talking, but what I want is, um, first of all, to point out that it is in a wax tin. It looks like a wax and people refer to it as a wax, but it's not a wax. So it's not a polish, it's not abrasive or anything. And so in theory, it's a wax because it mm -hmm. sits on top of a surface rather than altering the surface. Yeah. But it's a bit cleverer than that. So the way you were describing it was kind of almost a close to ceramic sealants. In yes. Fuso acts like uh, ceramic coating, let's say, we can say so, uh, but uh, we don't want to call it as a normal wax. Mm -hmm. We need to think about it as a coating. And we like, it's, you know, it's Fuso coat, yeah? Yeah. Coat, uh, this is the reason why it's called a coat, yeah? Because the layer on the, on the, on the paint uh, acts like a ceramic coating in some areas, yes, in some, uh, Let's say areas, yes. Yeah, so it's not this is important. It's uh, Soft 99 are not saying this is a ceramic coat. What yes. they're saying is it has similar behavioral attributes to a ceramic coat. I, I know right. there are enough companies out there claiming to have <laughs> ceramic waxes that you just spray on and they'll be there forever and ever or, or whatever. Um, uh, Soft 99 are not doing that. We need to make that very clear. But the application of this needs a lot of care and uh, a lot of prep, and as we all know, the more prep you do, the better it'll be. Um, so tell us, um, from start to finish, you've mm -hmm. got a punter, um, say he's got a really cool car, yeah. um, and uh, he's uh, just washed it, mm -hmm. and he, he's simply done uh, pre-wash, two bucket wash, and mm -hmm. towel dry of the car. Mm -hmm. What do you do next when it comes to applying Fuso? Okay, so Fuso is a very specific product because, because uh, it needs a good preparation of the paint. This is the first thing. Uh, just washing, it's not enough. Yeah, uh, you need to uh, prepare it properly. Uh, first of all, uh, clay work. This is the first thing to uh, remove all the uh, residue which is uh, sticked into the paint. All the embedded and uh, yes. so again clay bar decontamination. Decontamination. Yes, this uh, mechanical decontamination. This is the first thing. Uh, the other uh, step, let's say, mm -hmm. is a chemical cleaner. Uh, we can use micro liquid compound, which is in the offer of Soft 99. Uh, it will uh, deal with all the uh, chemical uh, residues, uh, like uh, I don't know, um, old wax maybe, old waxes, uh, all the uh, road film and uh, so on, oily film. Uh, what about tar and fallout? Would you use as tar remover and a fallout uh, remover? Or? We can. Uh, I think that clay bar uh, will uh, deal with uh, the tar, maybe not with mm -hmm. all of these, but uh, there are also some dedicated products like, uh, let's say, new pitch cleaner from the Soft 99 offer, mm -hmm. uh, which will deal with uh, this tar and glue and so on. Uh, this is an, let's say, additional uh, step yeah, with, mm -hmm. uh, with this process, but clay bar and cleaner uh, is absolute minimum of uh, the process. Yeah? And what, what, remind mm -hmm. me, what the name is, what's the name of that product, the cleaner product? Is it uh, like new pitch cleaner. Yes. New Pitch new Pitch okay. Cleaner is a kind of a new product, uh, we'll launch it soon uh, in Europe. Uh, oh, so it's not available yet? Uh, it's not available yet uh, in the European offer of Sot99, but uh, it will uh, appear around. soon. Yeah. That's brilliant. And would you describe okay. that as a pre-wax cleaner? Or? No, uh, this is tar and glue remover. Oh, this, okay. is, this, is the, this is the thing. Uh, so this is an optional uh, step, let's say, for normal user, maybe not, uh, not, not so uh, important, but we can do this like, like this. Uh, so uh, if we do the clay bar, uh, we can use a cleaner, chemical cleaner, which will uh, prepare uh, the paint for the uh, application of the wax. Uh, we can, of course, uh, remove also the final oily film Mm -hmm. uh, by a product called Silicon Off. It is also a product from Soft 99 Offer. D does that remove silicon? Uh, if it's called Silicon Off. <laughs> it's really hard to say, <laughs> but oily definitely yes. yes uh, we checked it. it and oily uh, film uh, is uh, totally removed. Uh, and uh, such prepared paint is uh, ready to uh, get waxed. It's ready to receive the wax. Yes, yeah. to receive the wax. So, 
all these steps have been done. Now, mm -hmm. would you recommend doing these indoors or can it be done outside? Uh, I think that uh, some of the process can be done uh, outside. Uh, mm -hmm. It also depends on the conditions outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, mm, we should uh, remember about that. But uh, if we have indoor uh, space, that will be perfect because the sunlight, the humidity, it will be all uh, consistent. consistent yes. What sort of temperature is the best temperature for applying FUSA? Uh, I think that 20 degrees, 21 degrees is really okay. Uh, but uh, we should uh, remember that the car paint should also be uh, cold, yes? Cool, okay. So cool. again, if you've got a black car and you've left it in the sunshine for an hour yes. beforehand, you need to let it cool. Um, what, given in this country, we don't often get 21 degrees. Yes. Um, so, and I suppose in Poland as well, it's cold as well in, in winter, just as it is uh, here. In winter, you know, we have uh, sometimes uh, minus 30 degree and sometimes in the summer we have uh, plus 35 degrees, like last week. Uh, wow. So. You know, it's, it's, it's really different. So, uh, what but, point? If you have to mm -hmm. be applying outside, at okay. what point say no, it is too cold, or no, it is too hot? What is the limit? Uh, what is the limit? I think that uh, around uh, 15 degrees mm -hmm. to 22, 23 degrees uh, in the shadow, it will be okay. Okay. in my opinion in the shade so yeah. um, if it's too hot I'm guessing the solvents will evaporate too quickly yes and if it's too cold um, mm, it, they too slowly let's say and yeah. the wax uh, will be um, hard to remove yes let's hard say to yeah hard to wipe, wipe off so we've got the right temperature we've mm -hmm. got an indoor environment yeah um, and we've done all the prep work yeah how do you actually apply the wax uh, Not the wax, the sealant, the, the coat. Sealant, the coat, yes. Uh, the key factor is uh, uh, layer. Okay. The layer should be thin, uh, almost invisible. This is the first and uh, the most important thing. If we put too much of the wax, it will be very, very the coat. Uh, the coat. The coat. It will be very, very uh, hard to uh, remove. This is the first thing. The second thing is uh, we have to uh, work uh, with the crisscross movements, yes. So not circles, like not circular movements, yes, because um, when we do it like this, uh, I mean circle movements, uh, it uh, it could be not so uh, good uh, covered. I mean uh, the it's consistency. The, so you end up creating lots of ridges and areas yes. with too much on, which would be a pain to get off, and areas with not enough on. Mm -hmm. um, so. And, and I can't emphasize enough how important it is to do uh, exactly as Michael says, is to use a very thin, thin amount. So um, the applicator that comes with it is foam, is it, or sponge? Yes, is it, uh, is it kind of foam, let's say, sponge. Uh, mm, I don't know really how to call it, but uh, it's uh, really important to work with the applicator before the work. I mean, okay. to uh, push it and so on. We can also uh, put it into the water. Okay. And try to uh, dump, it should be dump, yeah. Yeah, it, it will be perfect. Uh, if it's damp, uh, then the wax uh, is, uh, let's say, easier to uh, evenly spread. Mm -hmm. And when you, so when you're putting it, the, the sponge or the, the foam mm -hmm. into the wax, mm -hmm. now, do you like squeeze it in and get lots on there or do you mm -hmm. literally just touch it and twist out? Just touch it, twist, and this is enough, yes? If we put it with the force, uh, this is the beginning of the problem because we are taking too much wax from the can uh, and we can uh, take it and just look on the applicator. If it's full of wax, then it's the beginning of a problem. Okay. We can just push it and twist and uh, if uh, we put too much of the wax, we can just... Uh, get rid of the excess. Yes, get rid of, of the excess uh, on, the, on the can and this is a uh, good way. So to put this in perspective, if you have, so the Audi we do it on is an old D2 S8, so quite a big bonnet on that car. Mm -hmm. um, if you've just done your one twist in and out, likely, mm -hmm. would that be enough to do the whole bonnet, half the bonnet? Mm, uh, I think 20% uh, uh, of the bonnet, let's say. 20%, okay. With, so the, with the one, uh, up, 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 um, one twist per twist, so, yes. so twenty percent. So that means to do um, a bonnet of that size, so a big saloon car, is about five dips, and that's all. No more than that. And I know it's very tempting to kind of go around, put your bit on, <coughs> let them do it again. Don't do that. And bear in mind that if these guys wanted to sell more product, they would say, oh, put it on, get a spoon, you know, ladle it on. They're not. So um, you've applied that wax on. Now, how long do you wait for it to cure? 
uh, it depends uh, on the conditions. This is uh, also a very important thing, because uh, if we have 23 degrees and uh, it's hot outside, then we should reduce the time and wait around 5 minutes, let's say. Maybe even less. Mm. Maybe even less. Uh, we should look at the walks. If the uh, white, uh, let's say, haze, uh, haze white, yeah. appears, then then this is a good moment. But if we have uh, 15 degrees, to, let's say, or 16 degrees, uh, and it's cold outside, then 10 minutes won't be a problem. Gotcha. And you can leave it on too long. If you if you left yes. it on for an hour, it will be uh, hard to remove. Uh, hard to remove. Yeah. Really, really, really big problem. And if you, uh, for removal, first of all, mm -hmm. what would you recommend? Just a, a, a plush microfiber or a short twill microfiber? Yes, I think that uh, we should have few microfibers uh, mm -hmm. to do it, uh, kind of fluffy. Uh, it, it will be uh, better to uh, remove uh, the, 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 the dwarks. Yes, if we have a thin micro mi mi microfiber, then it will be also a problem because it will be filled with uh, the wax, mm -hmm. and we will work with the uh, with the with the with the wax uh, still on a bonnet or. Uh, gotcha. So the valency of the microfiber is less. So you'll actually just start relocating wax around the bonnet rather than removing it. Nice plush one. It'll bring it into the microfiber, mm -hmm. and you'll get more chances. But regularly and turn the your microfiber. to wipe it uh, finally, and, and it, it will be perfect. Yes, and I, I th that's again key. Is once you've done the majority of it, stand back, look at it then go over it again That's with it. a final buff. Um, and one, if you do get what we've been getting, now hopefully mm -hmm. with the final versions it won't be an issue, but it'll, I think, always be an issue if people apply too much. And again, mm -hmm. people watch this video, think they know it all, go and do it, and I'll get phone calls, I know I will. Um, so um, if you have put a bit too much on, mm -hmm. what is there anything you can spray on or help to either thin it out or to remove it so that you can mm -hmm. have another go? Uh, it also depends on the situation because if you put really really big amount of the wax, this is a problem because you should then you should uh, take it off with uh, cleaner, maybe with the machine. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on the situation. But if the amount of the wax was just just a, a little, little bit, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just a little bit too much, uh, then you can uh, try to wipe it more. Uh, let's say with, with more force, maybe mm -hmm. it will uh, help you. Uh, if not, uh, then uh, you can just maybe put a small amount of wax, try to wax it once again, mm -hmm. and then wipe it immediately. So this is a thing, that, again, that people don't sometimes compute, which I can understand why, is if you've got, and this works with a, with a wax as well as with a sealant or a coat, um, is the solvents inside a wax straight from the tin can essentially allow you to remelt, if you like, the wax that's on the car and that will allow you to remove it easier. So I know it seems counterproductive. I've got too much wax or coat on my car. What am I going to do to fix it? I'm going to put more on. No, that's bonkers. Actually, there is a bit of science behind it. And speaking of science, um, and this is something that we've had with Omega Test as well, and and it's going to be a really tricky one to put across to both professional and enthusiast people, I think, is um, beading. As we know, Fuso is a bead master. It yes. is it's pretty good at that. Um, and um, the one thing is this has got essentially chemical, uh, chemical bonding, if you like, to the paint through long chain polyxylene polymers, mm -hmm. aren't they? Mm -hmm. So again, that's not ceramic, but it's, it's similar to some of the best kind of high-end sealants that you see around and spray sealants um, in terms of technology. But there is a separate component, which is what gives you beading. So the beading will last, how long do you reckon the beading will last? Again, it depends on the situation, yeah. but uh, the hydrophobicity, let's say the beading, uh, is the visual effect uh, which will last until we, we are uh, taking care of the car properly. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, pH neutral shampoo and so on and so on. Uh, but if you treat your car with an, you know, um, kind of aggressive uh, things uh, mm -hmm. like uh, APC or something like this, yeah. uh, then the bidding will be removed. But uh, it doesn't uh, mean that there is no protection. And this is the point that I really wanted to make. So just as anything, if you're using a TFR strong alkaline, if you're using acids like wheel acid and stuff mm -hmm. like that, that will uh, significantly reduce the lifespan of the beading. Um, but there's a distinction between beading and protection. If it doesn't bead, it doesn't mean it's not protected. If you're getting sheeting, it's just because the element that sits on top that does all the beading in terms of surface tension has uh, decayed. Um, or it's all kind of clogged up with detritus and contamination. However, the bit that's underneath, the clever bit, the science, the chemical mm -hmm. bonding to the surface of your paintwork, 
It's still probably brilliant. still there. Yeah. And how long was the last Fuso coat? That was a 12 month coating, was it? 12 month coating, 12 months uh, durability, yes. Mm -hmm. This was the, and the new one uh, version is still the same. 12, 12 months uh, is the durability of the Fuso coat. But if the bidding uh, is not uh, present because uh, you are washing the car, you are just driving, mm -hmm. uh, the weather conditions and so on, this is the good uh, moment uh, to tell that uh, there is a dedicated quick detailer, Fuso Code Speed and Barrier, mm -hmm. which will, uh, let's say, uh, rejuvenate. help rejuvenate yeah. the, the, the bidding, the, the look and so on. Yes, this is the... And so if you want to apply that, I'm guessing you do a, a normal wash, not a decontamination. Mm -hmm. uh, you yes. spray it on and wipe it off, and then you get yes. your beads back again. That's it. Which is what people matter. Yeah. So uh, you highlight another interesting point there. Mm -hmm. Old Fuso coat lasted 12 months. Yes. New Fuso coat lasts 12 months. Yes. If somebody has old Fuso coat, mm -hmm. why should they get new Fuso coat? This is all about spreadability. Mm -hmm. This is the one factor, yes. Uh, new Fuso coat has some ingredients that uh, allow to uh, spread the wax evenly uh, much easier. Mm -hmm. This is the one thing. Uh, the other thing that the uh, solvent was changed uh, for the more eco-friendly and uh, you can smell it from the, from the can. Yes? Uh, it does smell different, as yes, we said. Yes, it smells yeah. different, uh, more... Uh, so it'll save the polar bears. Things. By buying new Fuso, a penguin will live. Basically, that's what we're saying. Yes. Essentially. So these are two uh, main, let's say, features of the new Fuso coat: uh, solvent and uh, workability. Let's say yes. So improved ease of use. Yes. So it makes it easier. Use, yes. But that's not to say that you should use it casually. You need to concentrate yeah. <clears> and work hard doing this because otherwise you will run into issues. And hell, we were doing it um, to the best of our abilities, and we ran into some issues. I think with the new formulation that'll be harder to do. But I guarantee you, if you put too much on, if you're hapdash about your decon, it's going to end in tears, and you're going to look very silly so um, it's going to be interesting when this hits market mm -hmm. and uh, I can see what I mean do you from a commercial point of view mm -hmm. um, what do you see as your big competition do you think it has other waxes or do you mm -hmm. think it's a ceramic coats or spray sealants where, uh, where do you hit you know we think that uh, Fuso is something beside wax and ceramic coating uh, it is uh, it has some uh, features of wax but some features of ceramic coating. It is just standing just beside, yeah? It, I think this is the, the, the place for Fuso coat. And uh, so far we can't see any uh, competition. I mean, uh, such a product which will be similar to Fuso coat. Uh, so you mean there's no direct comparison chemical uh, so on and uh, the uh, protection which it uh, uh, and, and other other features yes so normally a wax i mean there are waxes out there that claim 12 month durability i've seen waxes with four or five month durability um, i think this is going to like the predecessor be longer than a wax um, but obviously ceramic coatings have claimed durabilities in, in yes, of excess of lifetimes sometimes just define <laughs> your lifetime yes um so uh Big question, and I must apologise in advance because of us messing around with it and causing trouble. There might be a slight delay on it coming to the UK, I don't know. We'll have to talk to Fuso and to Jackie, who, yeah. who runs um, Nippon China in the UK. Um, but timeline, when mm -hmm. do you think this is going to be available? Uh, we think it will be available uh, around uh, July, uh, but uh, we will work on it. And uh, but this year uh, is uh, is uh, for Fuso code, for new version of Fuso code. This year is, I think. We have so something that happens in July. I don't know if you've heard of our little show called Wax Stock. Yeah. Um, will it be at Wax Stock? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, okay. I think we can uh, consult it uh, with, yes. uh, with with our team, which will be uh, present on Wax Stock. Uh, right. It's really hard to say. That's cool. Okay, well, I'm asking very awkward questions. I promise mm -hmm. only to ask one more. Okay. <laughs> Price. Um, Fuso has always been very good value for what it operates, particularly uh, your King of Gloss product. We looked at mm -hmm. that in the mega test, and that was very, very good value for mm -hmm. what it was offering and the size of the pot. Yeah. Um, I know prices aren't confirmed for that, uh, mm -hmm. for the new Fuso coat, but could you confirm perhaps that it won't be significantly more expensive than current Fuso? No. It won't be significant, significantly more than uh, the new Fuso coat. We, we have to remember that uh, if the ingredients are changed, uh, this is some evolution, let's say, of the mm -hmm. product, then the price is also working, let's say, yes, but it won't be a revolution, let's say so.
Gotcha. Um, right, well, I think we're more or less done here. The one thing I want to say also is remember that Soft99 is a, you're a big Japanese company. You've been around for a long, yeah. long time. In one of our previous issues, I think four, but I might be wrong, we did a, a short interview with Hideki Tanaka, your, mm -hmm. your head honcho, and um, I didn't realize how long away, how long it's been going. It's been going from the 50s and the 60s, that sort of time? Uh, yes, from, from, from the 60s, yes. Uh, Mr. Tanaka is a massive English car fan as well. It was bizarre. I thought it was just because we were an English magazine, but um, no, he's into Morgans and Land Rovers and things like that. So a bit of a character, I think, although I never met the chap. Um, but it's important to know that Soft 99 do a big range of products. It's not all about the Fusso, and they are, from what I can make out, genuinely unique in terms of how they do things, and they generally make their own products. And in a world where there's quite a lot of white labeling and copycatting and, and nothing particularly kind of inspiring on a regular basis, it's really good to see a company coming over and doing that. So um, they're definitely worth a try and do read the instructions. They do put them in English now. Yes, I know the early ones were in noughts and crosses, which terribly difficult to understand, um, but it was really but good now I've got that. And um, do comply, obviously you'll know this, um, EU, EU slash UK, but EU regulations in terms of health and safety, does it have all the correct signage yes, on and everything like yes, that? Yes, always. Otherwise you can find all the uh, all the, all the instructions, all the all the things uh, related to the formulation mm -hmm. uh, and, the and so on. Yes, on, the, yes, yeah. on the formal regulations also. You can uh, always find it on the uh, Soft99 products. So that's a good sign too. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming all the way to a very soggy blighty. Um, and as I say, we've got lots of cutscenes of the cars being done. And what we will have now, uh, by nature of having applied by the proper uh, Soft99 detailer, <laughs> um, is uh, a test. Uh, of longevity. It's on the front of the car that does about five or six hundred miles. Uh, I don't spare the horses on the car and it, it doesn't get monocoddled, so it'll be a real world test. Uh, it's going against a panel with nothing applied, just being machined down, a panel with Soft 99 Fusso coat applied too thickly, um, a panel with it applied correctly, and a panel with the Power Max Tsunami, which was a very impressive wax in our mega test. So it will be a true test. Uh, we will be doing regular updates, and you'll find, I guess, we're six months until the next magazine, the December magazine, so we'll have some idea then. Um, and by this time next year, we'll be able to say whether it really does last 12 months in, in, in England, which is a different thing in the UK. Anyhow, thanks very much, and Thank you very much. Uh, we'll have more later.